Nice lamppost. Looking at that fence, I'd guess they had dog issues around here. I could have attempted to vault the wall, but the thugs would have shot me. Howdy! Is this the way up to the monastery? Yeah, but it's shut. No one allowed in. The monks, uh, they're on strike. Wow! What happened? Someone make them work ungodly hours? Nah, I don't think that was the problem. Hi there, buddy. Sorry, we got a virus loose. Old place is locked down. Those poor monks. Going on strike when you got a virus. That's the pit. Whatever. I can't let you in. Howdy, fella. Sorry, pal. Monastery's closed. Tell father notice. Oh, gee. Well, ain't that just my luck? Yeah, ain't it? And my two pretty sisters here are so looking forward to seeing the monastery. Life's full of disappointments. Sure seems that way. And the monastery's definitely up there, huh? It is. But I'll still be there tomorrow. Oh, we fly back to Austin tonight. Well, isn't that a shame? So, why's the place closed? VIP visitors. Wow! That's exciting! Wh which VIPs? A foreign prince. The prince of where? Yeah, that's the one. Wow! So, we can't let normal folk in? Oh, of course not! No, not if the prince of where is there. Did you tell the prince about the virus? What? Your buddy said there was a virus. Did you warn the prince? Uh, well, there's no need. He's, uh, immune. Oh, of course. <laughs> Stupid me. Everybody knows that. Time for you to go, pal. I guess it is. You have a nice day now. And you. A bench with a view. I guess normally tourists would be fighting over that seat. It was a magnificent building. I wondered if the tabula was really hidden up there. There was no point leaving until we had what we came for. We're moving away from the monastery. Yes, but with those goons in the way, we have to find a different approach. Maybe there's some other way around, via the cable car station? Or at least someone in the can tell us what's going on. Glass canopies sparkled in the sun. Would have been a pain to clean those. The building looked very new. It must have been modernized recently. A thick cable suspended the cable cars over the canyon. Something inside the cable car was glinting. I couldn't make out what it was. My God! Nico! What is it? This telescope! It's free!
there were a couple of people stuck in the cable car. They looked kind of familiar. Then I realized it was my old friends Dwayne and Pearl Henderson. The Hendersons had an uncanny way of showing up wherever I went. The cable and wheel mechanism looked sturdy enough, but the thought of riding in that tiny cable car made my stomach flutter. It was the other station for the cable cars. There was a small chapel perched on the edge of the cliff. It looked ancient. I signaled them back. I wasn't sure they'd seen it. Pearl was mouthing something and gesturing. Pearl seemed to be writing something on the window. It said, help, stuck, door code 0797. The station door must have needed a code to open it. I wondered how Pearl came to know that. I idly wondered whether there was more to find by looking at the scenery. There was a small chapel perched on the edge of the cliff. It was the other station for the cable cars. Pearl had given me the code to the station door. They already knew I'd seen them. I idly wondered whether there was more to find by looking at the scenery. Wait, what's that? That rock looks familiar. Nico, take a look at this and tell me what you see. You're right. 
That rock looks like a head. I've seen that shape before. Take a look at this. The face in the Ouroboros, it's exactly the same shape as that rock. That can't be a coincidence. And you know what? Langham's got the forged picture, the one without the face. So the rock won't have meant anything to him. Nico, I don't think the tabula's up at the monastery. I think it's down there somewhere, around that rock. Come on, Nico. Pearl's giving me the code of the door. What? Pearl? Who? How? Trust me, Nico. I've got friends in low-hanging places. Huh. There's no one here. Looks like everything has been shut down. A metal lunchbox. Someone sure wanted to keep their cheese safe. Hey, is anybody there? Whoa! Did you hear that? We're stuck in here! Help! How about that, Miko? A talking lunchbox. Huh, what will they think of next? I'd better take it with me. A talking lunchbox. Locked. With no key, I was going to have to find a way to break into it. The lock was too well made to be picked. No one was manning the counter. There was no lock, but the door wouldn't open. Go away! Hello? Georges? There's someone in there. Are you alright in there? Just go away. Uh, uh, wait, 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 please. We mean you no harm. Please, come out. I'm staying right here until I know it's safe. Uh, uh, wait, 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 please. I'm staying... The cable cars were scheduled to run all day. The wheels were part of the cable car mechanism. The control panel looked complicated. It wasn't powered up. And the smell of burnt electrical components hung ominously in the air. The cogs turned, but the rest of the mechanism didn't seem to be engaging. The console circuitry looked pretty complex and dangerous. The console circuitry looked pretty complex. The box was now wedged in the cogs, or rather, the giant can opener. That's quite a mess you've made there, Georges. 
You know what they say about making omelets, Nico? You can't make them without strawberry jam? Strawberry jam was smeared all over the machinery. Just as I thought, it's a two-way radio. Uh, can anyone hear me? Dwayne, this is George. George Stobart. Holy cow, George. Just the fella I need. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Dwayne. And, and don't you worry, I'll have you out of there in a minute. Uh, you reckon you can get the cable car running again? No, the console isn't working properly. I've got no idea why not. everything about that place. Cat? Is she the girl in the closet? Has she locked herself in? Oh dear. Let me talk to her, darling. Cat? I found you a friendly voice. How do you know my name? Pearl? How did you get here? That's not possible. Listen, darling, it really is me. But I'm talking on the radio. George here is a very decent guy, and you should open the door. I'm not going to fall for that. Prove it's you. All right. Remember we discovered we both love musicals? Yeah, and my favorite one is... I've information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical. From Marathon to Waterloo, in order categorical. Um... I'm very good in integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and the malculus. In short, in matters, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. All right, only Pearl would know that, and I trust her. Who are you? I'm George, and this is Nico. How did you end up in a closet? There were some guys with guns. They took over the whole station. I hid in here. We're trying to avoid them, too. I was quite surprised, you know. They never mentioned guns at the job interview. Really? Uh, we need to use the cable car. Can you operate it? Yeah, if the console was working, but they sabotaged it. And there's no way to get it started? Mm, there might be. Let me see. See that burned out fuse down there? In the back by the prongs? Yeah. The idiots stuck a spanner in there and blew the fuse. They wanted to make sure no one could use the cable cars. Connect those two prongs somehow, and the console should restart. How on earth are we going to reach that? I don't know. But don't stick your arm in there. You'll get fried. Wire would be a good way to shortcut the prongs. I needed a closer look. The paper clip would do the trick connecting the two prongs. But I didn't want to just throw it in there. I might miss. That wasn't quite right. They didn't go together. Hmm. 
nothing of interest in there. With Langham and his thugs out there, it was far too dangerous to be walking about. Besides, I was convinced that we could make the cable cars work from in here. Well, I'd done stranger things in my life. The paper clip was now all sticky. Never in a month of Sundays. They didn't go together. That was never going to work. The control panel looked complicated. It wasn't powered up. The cogs would no longer turn. The paper clip would do the trick connecting the two prongs. But I didn't want to just throw it in there. I might miss. It was the only area that was safe for me to touch. Anywhere else would have given me one hell of a shock. The console looked complicated and dangerous. That wouldn't have worked. I needed to avoid touching anything that could give me a shock. I needed to avoid touching anything that could give me a shock. The console looked complicated and dangerous. The paper clip was all sticky with jam. That so didn't work. This paper clip is bound to come in useful. I just know it. Well, you've surprised me before, Georges. I'd keep it. Any ideas on how to reach those prongs in the console? Oh, if only we had some rubber gloves. Hmm. I should have asked Annette for hers. Well, you can't take everything, George. Hi, it's Cat, isn't it? Yeah, Cat D. Catty? And you run the station? <laughs> no, this is just a summer job. So, what do you do when you aren't locked in cupboards? I'm a designer. Oh, I knew a designer once. She... Josh, we're in a bit of a hurry here. Of course. I was just curious about Kat. Yes, I bet. How come you know about repairing consoles? I like to know what I'm working with. Got any ideas how I'm going to reach those prongs? Don't you have something useful in your pocket? Yep, most likely. So, what's down there? There's a little chapel called Santa Cova. 
Did those guys go down there too? Nah, I think they settled for closing down the cable cars. How do you know Pearl? She and Dwayne came through here this morning. You seem like old friends. I know. It's almost as if I'd seen her before. I didn't think she'd like that. Would you like to talk to Pearl again? No, thank you. Let's just find a way to rescue them. The cables were suspended in a huge contraption that ran the cable cars up and down. The cable cars were scheduled to run all day. No one was manning the counter. Anybody? No one was manning the counter. Anybody? That wouldn't work. No one was manning the counter. It was a radio. Dwayne had the other one down in the cable car. I stuck the paper clip to Trevor's back. I bet he could work in an office now. They didn't go together. Trevor could help, but I couldn't just throw him in there. I set him down at the edge where it was safe. Good boy, Trevor! It didn't work. Go, Trevor, go! Poor Trevor looked like he needed therapy, but the console was working. The console, it's working. Cool, I can send you down there if you want. Let me just bring the cable car up here. Pearl and Dwayne are gonna be mighty relieved. Oh, they must have been going down in the other cable car. Come on, Nico. There's no time to lose. As we got closer to the face in the rock, I knew for sure that we were on the right track. It was definitely the same as the face in the painting, but with one difference. The symbol of the tabula was missing from the rock formation. Well, here we are. Hmm, but no way to reach the face. Let's have a look around. There must be a way up.
There had to be a way to get to that rock face. Georges, the chapel looks like it's been built right into the rock. You're right. We should take a look inside. I wonder, how old do you think the chapel is? I'm guessing the exterior is a couple of hundred years old, but the inside? Who knows? Some parts could be much older. You think somehow this chapel might be connected to the face in the rock? At a guess, I would say so. <laughs> hey look, it's Pearl and Dwayne. Come on, honey bun, things ain't that bad. You just don't understand. Today's been a disaster. But the monastery was closed. We got stuck in the cable car. And now this place is a building site! Aw, oh, sweetie pie. This was supposed to be the spiritual highlight of our trip, Dwayne! But the only spirit I see... is that rotten turpentine over there! Aw, oh, heck. Clearly, the Hendersons weren't having a great vacation. Pearl. Shh, she doesn't want to be disturbed. Great to see you again, Mr. Henderson. Great to see you too, George. A great work back there with the cable car. <laughs> Is Pearl okay? Uh, I wish. Uh, I'm afraid we're having one of those days where everything goes wrong. <laughs> Tell me about it. What have you been up to since we last met in Quaramonte? Well, there was that little sideshow in Rome, but we can't talk about that. Uh, you know why, George. I do? Uh, I mean, I do. Why? Top secret. Need to know, Nico. Dwayne is, uh, a snoozer. Don't you mean a sleeper? No way, honey. A snoozer's at least two pay grades up from a sleeper. Uh, uh, so I hear. <laughs> anyway, I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Miss, uh... Nicole Collar. Call me Nico. Well, how's about that? So this is the beautiful Nico. No wonder you've been hiding her away from me, Georgie boy. Gosh, uh, no, I, uh... It's lovely to finally meet you too, Mr. Henderson. George has told me so much about you. Oh, call me Dwayne, my dear. And let me assure you of one thing. Everything you've heard is quite possibly true. Dwayne was loud, large, and short-sighted. But boy, was he a charmer. Is there anything we can do for Pearl? Yeah, I sure as hell hope so, George. She's been planning and researching this trip for years. Our little pilgrimage. And Santa Cova Chapel here was the cherry on the cake. Not a thing she don't know about this place. Madonna, blah, blah, blah. Chapel built in, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> She's Santa Cova's very own walking encyclopedia. Well, weeping encyclopedia, I should say. <laughs> So, what brings you to Santa Cova? Pearl's idea from the get-go. <laughs> Ever since the unfortunate car accident back home, she's been scouring those pilgrimage brochures. Gotta be full of wonder and life-changing imagery. Got to have uh, penance potential. Got to offer a, a real spiritual experience. Well, I'm sure this place will be very spiritual, once it's finished. <laughs> if the chapel is not what she expected, how about the monastery? Hot dog, no! That place is for tourists, not pilgrims. 
You said she expected a spiritual experience? Well, that's what the brochure promised. Pilgrimages, little monk fellas, singing, uh, shafts of light, the, the whole shebang. Smells, bells, and heavenly lights. Yeah, that's what the lady wanted. <laughs> oh, excuse me, yeah, Pearl needs me. There, there, dear. Pearl could be a mine of information about the chapel, if we could just cheer her up. Pearl! Shh, she doesn't want to be disturbed. Hi, Dwayne. Hey, George. Did you see the Black Madonna? Oh, you betcha. She's the little lady we came to see. Though Pearl's in too much of a state to even look at her. <laughs> hey, that tune you were whistling earlier, it sounded familiar. Oh, it's Schubert's Ave Maria. In our courting days, me and Pearl used to hang out with the Campanology Society. It was Pearl's favorite. Oh, excuse me, yeah, Pearl needs me. There, there, dear. It was a spectacularly unremarkable traffic cone. A fire extinguisher, with all these lighted candles, seemed like a sensible precaution. It looked like a huge cheese grater. I had absolutely no idea what possible use it could have. A paint can hung from the scaffolding. It looked just like its neighbor. A paint can was ha It looked just like its neighbor. The scaffolding was a little loose. Everything rattled. It made a surprisingly dulcet noise. I poured the turpentine into the paint can. The hammer produced a promising sound. An F sharp. What are you up to? Look, I made a churchenspiel. Well, that was fun. My mother always said cleanliness is next to godliness. I'd lowered the candelabra. I often wondered what these things looked like close up. A statue of the Madonna and Child watched over the chapel. An empty, coffee-stained mug had been left by the altar. A modern plaster altar had been built against the rock. I lit the candles on the candelabra. 
The Black Madonna was clearly the focal point of the chapel. I couldn't see anything unusual about it. The Black Madonna was clearly the focal point of the chapel. That would be pointless. It was a handful of aromatic sandalwood shavings. That wouldn't make any sense. It was rickety scaffolding cluttered with tools and supplies. It produced a dull sound when I wrapped my knuckle against it. That wasn't worth trying. That was never going to work. That wouldn't work. The hammer produced a promising sound. B, if I wasn't mistaken. Hmm, that didn't sound right. Well, that was fun. The hammer produced a promising sound. G. F sharp. That sounded like an A. No, that wasn't quite right. F sharp. A. G. F sharp. Well, that was fun. The view over the valley was spectacular. Hmm, candles could be heavenly. But Pearl had already claimed this little oasis of spirituality as her own. I needed something more striking to get her attention. It was rickety scaffolding cluttered with tools and supplies. That wouldn't have worked. That would be pointless. I didn't want to set my pants on fire.
I sprayed the shavings with Brett. Delightful. That was never going to work. That wouldn't work. I put the scented shavings in the mug. The mug contained potpourri made by yours truly. I rested the side mirror precariously on the candelabra. I secured the mirror in place with some yarn. Now that was something. The light from the candelabra spilled over the black Madonna like waves of spiritual goodness in candle form. The black Madonna was clearly the focal point of the chapel. I lit the scented shavings. A sweet aroma started to fill the room. The hammer produced a promising sound. F sharp. G. B. A. G. I had it. It was the tune Dwayne was humming. Josh, that's Ave Maria. Let me have a go. Wow, you 
really nailed that, Nico. Yep, this mop really is pretty special. Leave this to me. Pumpkin? Oh my! What? The sound of angels, the lights of heaven, the smell of party, and... Yes? The Madonna, I do believe. Tears? She's crying, Dwayne! The Madonna's crying! Little Timmy, wrong side of the road, not my fault, broken leg, compensation claim, forgive me, poor Timmy. Oh, Pearl, my precious, you're such a sensitive soul. Well, now that's done. I feel my soul's floating on air. We can get on with our pilgrimage, Dwayne. Just another thousand clicks to go. Pearl was back to her usual cheery self. Mrs. Henderson. George, dear boy. How you feeling? Oh, just fine, thank you. I have just seen a miracle, George. It's all gonna be all right from now. I'm sure it is, Mrs. Henderson, I'm sure it is. So, Pearl, what have you been up to since we last met? Well, George, I've been on a journey. Oh, really? Well, what kind of journey? A spiritual one. A journey along the road to enlightenment. Wow. And is that what brought you here? It is. Though Santa Cova is but one step on that road. What's so special about Santa Cova? It's an ancient and very holy place. I've spent the last year researching it, and I can truly say there is nothing I do not know about it. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that rock out there? No, only that for a thousand years, people have claimed to see a face in its shapes. What can you tell me about the statue? I read that the Black Madonna has been here since the ninth century. She's called the Virgin of Montserrat. Some say the original was moved to the cathedral. But Duane and I know that's just a bluff, don't we, honey? We sure do. This one is the real McCoy. Still, uh, keeping busy, Duane? Like the man said, George, that old kaleidoscope keeps getting shaken. And the pieces are ever in flux. Guess it's your job to pick them up, huh? Well, somebody has to do it, compadre. I enjoyed talking to Duane, but I was rarely any the wiser afterwards. What can you tell me about Santa Cova? Well, dear, they call it the Chapel of the Holy Grotto. It was built directly into the mountain itself in 1696. It survived the Napoleonic Wars, mudslides, civil war. But the chapel is still standing today. It's a miracle. Or a restoration. What was that, dear? Yes, a miracle. Pearl, does this mean anything to you? Oh, nothing, dear. Apart from the obvious Gnostic connotations, of course. What? You know, the Dominicans. All those Gnostic saints. Doubting Thomas, Judas, 
And you see the woman in the red cloak? The infamous Mary Magdalene herself. A lady in red. That's enough now, Dwayne. You know my feelings about her. Pearl knew her Gnostic onions, all right. Then there's the Ouroboros, of course. Something special about it? Well, if I remember rightly, there was an Ouroboros right here in this chapel. Back in the 30s and 40s, a chapel was renovated. The workmen uncovered numerous symbols carved in the rock. Amongst them was a fine Ouroboros. But that's amazing. So, where is it? Oh, it's not there now. Oh. It was considered blasphemous, so they plastered over it. Sweetheart, I think it's time for us to go. The road to enlightenment waits for no woman. Tis the pilgrim's lot, George. It was so nice to see you again. And meet your girlfriend. We're not... Take this radio, Nico. Never know when you might need it. Uh, keep an eye on our boy George here. Poor little lost lamb. I'm not... Don't worry, this little lamb's in safe hands. Bon voyage. Bye-bye, dears. See ya. Nico, don't even start. Little lamb? Let's focus on the task in hand, shall we? Okay, this Ouroboros that Pearl mentioned... You're right. We need to find it. A modern plaster altar had been built against the rock. I hoped this was the right thing to do. Hey, Nico! I found the Ouroboros! So what now? Pearl was right. The plaster had covered an Ouroboros. I pushed the Ouroboros, but nothing happened. I couldn't see anything unusual about it. That wouldn't make any sense. There was a recess in the wall with a Latin word carved above it. Puritas. Purity. I'd seen that word before somewhere. The third passage read, Pure light, white light, pure light will win. So it was written in the old texts, affirmed by the Tabula Veritatis. And these were the accused's last words. Interesting. There was more about light, and somehow the Tabula Veritatis had a connection. Simeon would have known what it all meant, but unfortunately, Simeon was dead. It was an old crank handle. The medallion matched the Ouroboros in the wall. I needed a better idea. I already had a candle.
That would be pointless. It was an ordinary candle in a colored glass. I didn't want to set my pants on fire. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Nope, I needed to try something else. I needed a better idea. That wouldn't make any sense. That wasn't worth trying. What was that noise? Ex igne puritas. Through fire, purity. The Black Madonna was clearly the focal point of the chapel. I knew it. Another secret passageway. Amazing, Charles. How did you do it? Just another case of the old Stobart magic, I guess, Nico. It, uh, it looks a little dark in there. Are you scared, Charles? Of course not. Just worried about you tripping, that's all. Oh, this is one dark cave. It's the door that worries me, Georges. Well, I'm sure the door will open again if we give it a minute. No need to panic. Now we panic. I gotta say, Nico, you're pretty calm about this. Traveling with you, Georges? I've got used to this kind of thing. If I panicked every time a door shut behind us, probably forever, well... You're right. What was I thinking? You see if you can get the door open, and I'll go check out the... dark, evil-smelling cave. Fumbling around in the dark wasn't gonna be fun. But heck, I'd spent a lifetime doing it, so what was new? <laughs> 